Hello everybody, English Woodsman here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. More so thank you very much for clicking on my video. So tonight we're in like an urban area. We're gonna do a bivy bag camp. I've got something different for dinner, so I'll show you that as well. And I've got an old lantern, gas lantern, what I'm gonna be using. Something a little bit different, why aren't you the font channel? And when I say we, there's myself and vegan outdoors is somewhere over there i think he's taking a bit of a wee <laughs> but yeah so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna dip down here and when we're down there and i find a little spot i bring you back because up here i think you can tell already but it is it's quite windy so hopefully within the dip the wind uh, will drop that's my hope anyway but yeah what i've got for dinner is something i've done it before on my channel but not as much so like i say as soon as i find somewhere i'll definitely bring you back so like i just said this is an urban area so we may uh road noise from probably that direction. I think you can hear there's like a motorbike in the background anyway. But yeah, there is some people that do walk around this place at night as well. Late night dog walkers. There's just rubbish everywhere. Here's an absolute mess down here. It's such a beautiful place as well. It's one of the things where people want to come out but they don't have the respect for the nature of what they have around themselves. But yeah, it is a urban local area local what's a local an urban local area this camp were like do you want fancy going there yeah i'll have a backpack in 20 minutes done <laughs> that's what sort of camp this one is so the chance of me forgetting something is very very likely now right, let's find somewhere to camp right so after a good half an hour looking around somewhere to camp there's a uh, two problems in where we like to be sometimes it's way too trashy a lot of broken glass as air beds will probably get popped if we don't clear it up properly and then sometimes we're in the wind tunnel there's a bit of a wind tunnel here but this brick wall is giving us quite a bit of protection from the wind like see how windy it is now you just get a big gust of wind so what me and dan said is we use this wall as a bit of a wind block as well so it's a good idea now behind this wall is a golf pitch absolutely load of flat spots there <laughs> but <laughs> we can't camp on a golf pitch we're not going to do that so yeah i'll quickly show you around what we're going to be looking at and the good thing as well is what i'm going to boil in the water with i need lots of dry wood and the floor is covered with it so that's probably a good thing as well and we've got vegan down there almost hitting the thousand subscribers people so if you've not yet seen his channel go and go ahead and give him a subscribe please nice to see him hit that thousand and that's where his setup stuff is so the first thing we'll do is i want to start leveling some of this ground make sure there's no glass around i do have a footprint for my tent so i want to put my bivy on that hopefully that'll work i can't see why it doesn't but yeah, first thing we're gonna to have to start cleaning up and dry wood like this is perfect for what I need. So I get all this dealt with, I'll get set up and then I'll show you this ration pack. If we just get rid of these bricks, mind you can use these bricks if we have a little fire lurk, can't we? Yeah. All these bricks won't come out of wall. You fancy building a wall tomorrow morning? Yeah, no, Put all the wall back together. <laughs> It's a bit of level, but not quite here. Actually. Yeah, we've just got to get all this down, on it? Should be all right. Put those air mats down. Give it a little bit of coolness. So the thing about this hoop bivy, it's the gir top one and it's a very very low profile if you already subscribed to my channel you'll know that already or if you've watched my videos and not yet subscribed because it says quite a lot of my viewers are non-subscribers so if you're seeing this for the first time 
and you like what you see in this video though, do consider you know following it's nice to see new people come up in comments and stuff so anyway back to this now anyway what we need to do is we need to feed the poles through these little running sleeves here I call them running sleeves because it runs through you know like, sort of like a tunnel sort of thing and it's a sleeve because you're covering your poles over if it look the thing is people call them different things I just like to call them that so what you gotta do you gotta cross them so I put one to the left and one to the right I mean keep them in place let's turn it round and then you gotta repeat it so this one's coming off this side and then this one's going to be growing in here but it's come out at the other side so I mean where you gotta try to keep it in place quite fiddly but once it's up it's up and it's fairly tight as well so it holds it in place really well so there we go so that's what it looked like I believe it or not it might look small but when you're in it you've got a little bit of room to turn around maybe to watch your phone read a book if you're a reader I'm, I'm not a reader so I don't know exactly to be true for what room you've got for reading in it and there we go and that's how it's going to be I was going to put this foam mat what reflects your body heat back up at you underneath the hoop bivvy but it doesn't have them uh, plastic or not like bungee straps what goes from one side to the other I think that's the other one I don't have that anymore but like I was just saying to Dan I might re-get that other one I lent it to a friend and I never got it back so it's one of them things where summer times come in do a little videos like this oh it does have them straps there look it has them on the inside of the bivy i'm not sure if there's one down the bottom either no it's just that one there so what we'll do is we'll stick this side here underneath it so it at least keeps it in place where my head's going to be and then we'll just roll it down we we'll roll it into the bottom the bivy bag like that and then what I'm hoping is my little air mat that I've got yeah well easy fit under that strap as well so the sleeping bag tonight it's a little bit warmer now so I'm gonna start using the OEX 400 EV sleeping bag one time this was really popular on my channel I use it quite a lot but they say it's 400 so four seasons I won't really use it by itself at winter time you need like a liner a thermal mat and stuff like that but inside it you're gonna find my travelers uh, IMX OEX mat and then obviously the sleeping bag itself and I think like there's something else in there as well oh yeah my bivy my little other bivy Oh, that's not too bad, I can sort some out with that. But first thing I need to do is blow this other mat up. Now I didn't bring the pump, so I'm gonna have to use my own breath. It's not always a good idea because inside the air mats you can build like you know condensation build up. If it gets cold outside, the air in the mat don't warm up to your body heat. Then you can start like say condensation, you can get a mold build up inside of it. It's not a brilliant idea, so I won't recommend you do it really, but I'm gonna have to do it now. Should have brought the little air pump really but should have by accident beginning of the video this was a seriously last minute camp so it, i did say there's a chance i probably didn't bring everything well everybody dan's just come out and said he's got his air pump once he's seen me blow this thing up and nearly pass out <laughs> so to tell me oh, i've got my air pump a bit too late dan <laughs> 
I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll borrow his air pump and I'll show you how it attaches to it. Yeah, so you can get these little air pumps like this. I'm sure Dan will say what brand it is on his channel. So you need to do is put it into the mat, switch it on underneath. It's definitely working. It definitely is quick to do it by your mouth as well, but this is not going to cause no warm air to go in. And popped off. Right, turn it off. Quick blast it me on it, it'll give it that little bit of extra. But yeah, they're pretty good, and you can put the valve on this side here, and that you know deflate stuff. So that's pretty good, isn't it? So once again, let's get all this put back in place. All right, so I thought I'd just quickly give you another quick run through. So the go top bivvy. This heat reflecting mat, I got it from my own bargains or B&M for about fiver. The OEX air mat, now this one is a little bit noisy. So yeah, it won't keep me awake once I'm, I'm asleep, I'm asleep. Then like I say, the 400 sleeping bag, sleeping bag liner. My uh, own bargains pillow. And then I've got some of these now. Give us your thoughts about them in the comments below, please do let me know. What do you think about them? Basically, the down camping slippers, when it's still a little bit nippy at night, if your feet get cold when you're out camping like mine do, you can get these, slip them on, get into your sleeping bag, and your feet warm up. So do let me know about them in the comments below. Please don't ask me for a link, because somebody else did, and I seriously can't find the link anywhere where I got them from. I think it was eBay. You can put it there, keep you keep around your ankle nice and tight so you don't lose any warm air like i say they are down so they're pretty good and the bottoms are made out of tougher material so if you need to get up for a night to go to the toilet you know you're not going to get wet feet yeah let me know in the comments below what you think about them would you wear them they do look a bit bit big but they've kept my feet nice and warm a lot of the time when i've been out camping what i like about this bivy you got a mesh window sort of door thing there so you can leave that open and the condensation will come out if you have it closed up you do get condensation build up on the inside but since it's not going to drop to no cold temperatures tonight i will leave that open and i can guarantee in the morning there'll be no condensation at all i can promise you that and if i remember i will definitely show you in the morning but yeah, you can just slip it up if you don't want that just like that but like i say if you close it then you do get condensation build up so i'm using this tonight it's one of them gas camping gas lanterns c200s i've uh, i've had it in my garden last summer been messing around with it and i just clean it shed out you know like scott did last weekend well i thought i might clean my shed out when i go home Honestly, I'm not taking Mick out of Scott at all. I did actually clean my shed out and I come across this. Well, I won't clean the shed out. I'm looking for an, uh, a spotlight for outdoor in my back garden for the puppy when he goes out to the toilet. And then I started tidying bits up and I come across this. And it's very simple. You get a gas canister, you just screw it up and it breaks the seal. And then you can hang it up like that. I'm sure people see them a lot. And you do that and the gas comes out. And if you take this off here, you light it on the inside through that, like, I forget what you're calling things. I got them off Amazon a while back. Just sort of wrap it round where the gas comes out and that starts glowing. So yeah, I'll light that later on tonight. Dan's got an, uh, a decent one. I think he used that a few times on his channel. Yeah, he has got a decent one. One what I may look at getting. Wow, well, sun's shining right down this wall here, isn't it? Yeah, I might look at getting that one. 
It does look pretty cool. I can't even remember where I got this one from, to be truthful. I'll tell you where I got it from, actually. That's uh, I just remembered then. I was trying to think about it as well all week. Uh, I went to an, uh, a forklift truck yard to pick up some gas for work in van. And he had uh, this thrown in. What people, you know your canisters, these gas canisters? If you don't use them, you can take them there and get rid of them. And there was just this laying in it. So I asked him, can I give him a fiver? And he told me to get lost and take it for free. <laughs> so not bad for free item, is it? But when it gets dark, we'll have a look at that. It'll be interesting to see it. Now I know Dan wants to do some recording, so I'm gonna shut up, just relax, enjoy the woodland, break a few sticks up, because I need to boil some water. Breaking a few little bits up. You know, just thought someone does actually comment about it. Yeah, I'm wearing trainers. Last time someone went on at me. You know, you're a YouTuber of your size and you, you know, you go out camping and you're wearing your trainers. You know why I wear trainers? If I'm only local, you know, I'm not millions of miles away. I didn't wear them last weekend when we did a load of hiking. But I wear hard steel toe cap boots all week at work. So when weekend comes, I just want to wear some trainers that are comfortable. It's dry, it's not muddy, so wearing trainers is my way of doing it. I'm sure if people's got a problem, they can comment anyway like they do. You know, you do get your nitpickers. And you can tell the sales and nitpicking away at what you do because it can be something right at the end of the video and the watch just for that. Or they'll say something about the beginning of the video and then the must watch all way to say something about the end part of it. It's like a, another YouTuber. I must remember these names. He says people unsubscribe to him because he was using an open fire. I can't remember, can't remember one now, but he said he thinks people unsubscribe because of that. I can see that. But yeah, people do pick a lot. You get you decent lot. You know, what really do leave decent, nice comments and really enjoy me nattering away like I am doing. But yeah, so if you've noticed I'm wearing trainers, there's no point commenting about it because I'll just ignore it. I'm not going to sit here and retaliate to people going on about them. Like I said, I wear hard work boots, steel toe caps all week. Weekend comes, I want to wear something comfortable on my feet. And trainers is what I do find comfortable, like probably a lot of people do anyway. But I want to make myself a coffee, but I want to get this Kelly Kettle. There's another name from now, but I, I just get Kelly Kettle in my in my mind to call it. I want to get this going, and basically we have to have the fire in the bottom of there just to start it off. You pour the water on the inside. It's double walled, and as the fire's going, you can feed more wood into it there to keep the fire going so it boils your water. But everything I want to use for like lighting a fire. It's going to be coming out of this Lithuanian Army Ration Pack Menu 9. Now, I can't read Lithuanian, so I have no idea what the meal is inside of it. I have an idea what's inside them. So what I need to do is just open it up. Yeah, like I said, I know what's inside them. You like a chocolate bar, like a fruit thing, jam idea. So you get these hard rusk biscuits now if you've got sensitive teeth or weak teeth I recommend you don't have them because they are extremely hard you get a pack of hazelnuts and then you get like things are freezing now it's not even that cold cherry flavored instant drinks like an energy drink you get some other things here. A chicken broth. So that's something like a soup, isn't it? Chicken broth. Uh, some sugar. Some dark chocolate. Very, very dark chocolate. 
Now this is rather jam or honey, one or the other. And then in here you get cheap plastic spoon, breaks the minute you use it, so that's extremely useless. An alcohol wipe, you get some matches, some little cubes to start your fire with. That's, that's the only reason why I've opened it now for this. And you get this poxy little cable tie for I don't know what reason. Now, that did say sugar. Yeah, sugar, but there's... Is this coffee? No, it says chicken broth on it. Let's open it. We can put it to one side and have a look. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a chicken broth uh, soup idea. So you get all this, but then you get sugar and you don't get anything to make a coffee with. That's a bit of a pointless thing. Then you get this little stove. You've got to fold it round. Basically, like so. Like that. And you bend each one round like this. I'm not going to use it, I'm just quickly folding it so you can see. And then what you do, you put them little cubes inside that singular, and then you can put your pot over and boil your water. But inside here is the main meal. Now this is what I want to see exactly what flavour it is. So here, you get a flameless heat pad. So basically you've got to fill it with water up to that dotted line there with cold water. Put your meal in it, that heats up and it heat, heats your meal up. So we've got stewed pork with parsley and mash. Stewed pork. We'll have a look at that in a bit. So like I say, we're going to have to put a bit of water in, stick it in there and then we'll heat that up. But for now, I really don't want to get myself a drink on the go, so we're going to have to light that curly kill. I think this is about 350 mil, maybe 400 mil. I think 350 mil brings more of a belt to me. I'm not going to leave that plug on when I'm boiling the water because I think we can all get what will happen, it'll explode. I'll get some of these fine bits first. You really got to start off with fine stuff. And you don't want oat to be sitting on that lip there. I think these matches are blue tips. Yeah, there we go, look at that there. Well, there we go. That's where it starts to be fun. Let's move my water. Tell what I'm going to do. I'm going to crush it a little bit. There we go. I think we'll have a better chance of it starting then. Don't help with this wind. Okay, we'll get there, people. Bear with me. I've got a full box of matches to go at. There we go. Yep, that's got it. Let's just stick some of these over it. Just to give it something to burn away at.
Yeah, I feel some heat building up there now. Brilliant. Right, so what I'm drinking here is something a little bit different and it's called peach tea. What I need to do is just get four spoonfuls of it. It says free, but I do like my drinks to be fairly strong. So I'm just going to put four of them in. Basically, it just looks like some sort of pellet sort of thing. You can get them in uh, Lidl. You can get them in peach, lemon. I think I've only once seen them in strawberry flavour. But yeah, what you need to do is just slowly keep filling it up. It doesn't take long to boil either. That's some of water. That's finely boiled. Now, I don't know how much wood it has burnt on the inside. So this is where sometimes a little bit of wood can fall off. No, it's not that bad, is it? Yeah, it's quite nice. I think it's when it drinks what, the more you have it, the more you get used to. I think I'm just bored of drinking coffee. I've, I haven't drunk tea for a lot of years. Try new things out now and again. It's 20 past eight at night. And it's as, <laughs> as light as it is. It's beautiful. Last weekend, we went to Todmington. And a nice hike up there. The day, the day after, I were all right about it, but the day after that, I were absolutely exhausted. I, I just couldn't be bothered with anything. It was right weird. I, I thought I'd be, you know, a bit out of energy the next day, but we're actually the day after the next day, sort of thing. So you imagine Christmas Eve. It won't Christmas Day with Boxing Day. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to explain it like that. But yeah, we went for the long hike and a camp. Christmas Eve, I was alright Christmas Day, but you know, Boxing Day, I was battered by it. And I was trying to work as well, and it was like, just killing me, my body was aching. That's the thing, you know, all winter we sort of get born idle as, a, as you know, a human, the human race on the planet. I think I think we'd get bored, we get born idle and stuff. So we don't do that much exercise, and as soon as nice weather's here, it's like, let's get out, and we all push yourself instead of slowly building his way up to these things like that. You're gonna get the people do all the you know long marathons all through winter time and stuff. But majority of the, the world through the winter months are lazy. You know, it's city time, get on from work, pitch black, just put TV on. Stuff like that in it really, and you start getting takeaways and stuff. And summertime comes out, like just says you you're gonna get up and get out and you just don't realise how much energy you don't have because you've been so bun I love at winter. So it's a weird way to look at it, but when you do actually sit down and work stuff out, it is like, it's right, in my eyes anyway, it could be absolutely wrong to everybody else. But yeah, winter, because it's dark, cold, we get housebound, don't we, we just become born idle. Then we're getting over all the lockdowns and stuff, because that's finally gone out way now. People got born idle over that as well, not going to work. We couldn't have helped that one. And anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. I'm just going to sit back like Danny's and just, you know, listening to the birds and trees and, you know what I mean, don't you? Just going to enjoy nature.
Yeah, I was just thinking to myself, I'm having a little ponder. Is that called a ponder? Yeah. Yeah, I want to ponder to myself. And really, camping behind a brick wall, it's sort of like a safety thing. You know, if you're a bit nervous about camping by yourself, obviously I'm not camping by myself. I've got done with me, but you know, if you're thinking about getting into camping or you've got a certain place you can go where you know, you're quite restricted to where you can camp, let's say, or you want to camp. You know, if you back up to a brick wall like this, then at least yourself, you know, in your nerves, you know there's no coming from this direction. Now, over in UK, we've got nothing to worry about. This time of year, back end of April, we've still got no bugs out hardly. We don't have bears. We don't have no what's going to hunt us down and eat us. Apparently, we have Bigfoot. I'm yet to see one. But, uh, so the, the idea of being scared of something getting us it's more like the human race you know fellow people what might cause you problems you know young kids and stuff but at least if you do this like this idea you can see dan set up there this you don't have to worry about this direction all you have to worry about is the direction that i've shown you but honestly what you got to think about as well is when you're out camping at night time by yourself i've done it a lot by myself sometimes i go out and i just don't record I want to enjoy, you know, the night and just let it pass by without having to think about recording and what I'm going to say and what I'm going to use. But when it gets dark, there's going to be nobody around. And if there is, you're always going to see a torch, headlight, you know, lamp on the head, let's say, or the mobile phones. And when you're here at night and it's really, really quiet, you're going to wear somebody walking past you or even around you. You know, it's that's good enough time to get your little torch, have a look round to make them away, you know, to be noticed. But they'd be more uh, scared of seeing you in the woods, if they're in the woods, if you get what I mean. But yeah, finding yourself a brick wall like this, it's, it's not a bad idea. Like where we are, it's trashy, there's a lot of uh, hill hilly areas, nowhere flat to lay. But yeah, over in the UK, a lot of people ask us, oh, you don't have bears, you don't know, we don't have any of that stuff. I know they're on about introducing wolves into Scotland sometime, but I don't know what come of that. You know, we have foxes, we have badgers, we have deer. They seem to scarp as soon as they see us. Screwels, they don't bother us, the little furry things they are. Rats, mice can get a little bit brave, but we don't really see many of them when I'm out camping either. You can get hedgehogs. I know people in the UK are like, yeah, shut up, Dan. God's sake, we know this. But other people from America and Australia and stuff do ask you. We don't have any snakes. We might have grass snakes up in hills and stuff. But I've never seen out like that. I put it this way, if I saw a snake, <laughs> I'd be gone as quick as I came. <laughs> I'd come back tomorrow with my missus <laughs> to pick all this up. <laughs> I have a bad phobia of snakes. Honestly, I'd be gone. <laughs> get my missus <laughs> anyway I'm going to go and I'm going to uh, just relax a bit longer and I'm going to put that meal on right I'm going to have some dinner now it's almost dark Dan's got his little light bulb on I've got a little light bulb hanging off of that tree there like an LED light bulb it goes to your battery pack and then you can have it on like a really low setting what with this again Stewed pork. Mm. Stewed pork for tea. Yeah, temperatures definitely drop now. Some of the kids walked past earlier. And he had a cone. Uh, a bit of a tree off like of a conifer. If you have it in UK, you'll know what one of them is. And like a foam uh, mattress thing. And a spade. I said, what are you doing? He goes, we're going to have a fire. We're going to dig a fire pit. <laughs> he says, have you got a light I can use? <laughs> so me and Dan's like, eh. He goes, have you got a lighter? So I don't have a lighter. Do you have any matches? I don't have any matches. And in the meantime, my little uh, thing was still burning up, last little bits off. And how did you get your fire to light? I said, oh, lightning. <laughs> Bless him. Anyway, they're up there doing something. So we told them warden comes round. So they've disappeared. 
So anyway, yeah, that was quite funny, that. You're going to light a cone. <laughs> right, so this heating mat here, it's quite a big one this time. You do get somewhat of probably half the size of them. So I'll put it back in. And like I said earlier, and get it back all the way back down. Anyway, that dotted line there, that's where we need to put some water in. Wonder how much, how many mils you need for that. 45 mil of water. Well, I've got no way of trying uh, measuring that tonight. So we are just going to guess. It's not hard to guess, really, is it? We've got a line to go to. How much is there? Yeah, me and Dan were having a conversation about this uh, wearing your shoes, you know, what shoes you use. Like I'm wearing my trainers. We're having a conversation about that. Dan's off doing a little bit of photography with his night camera. So what I need to do is I need to get this meal laid on top of it. But they don't hardly give you any room to get it in. There we go, fall down the side of it. Now I'll be honest with me. Just drop a comment, it's up to you. Or you can thumbs up the video. In this video, has there been too much talking? I know I've asked a question before, but I've gained a lot more new followers. I was saying to Dan, I feel like I've talked a lot in this one. You do need to squeeze this back in little box as well. Yeah, I just feel like I've chatted away quite a lot. I can feel a little bit of heat build up there. I'll just keep that there. Now, my past experience with these is it never gets absolutely boiling hot. It just warms it up through the meal. Oh, well, yeah, I can uh, I don't know where the camera is, actually. Uh, the camera, I'm looking at it. Uh, I don't know where the sound is. You see the bags... Time to, you know, I'm just trying to say, uh, yeah, what would I call that now? I'm gonna look back there and go, duh, it's called that. Anyway, forget it, just forget it. But yeah, it's starting to work. So we are gonna have a warm meal there. Cold hands, cold hands. Someone's going to say wear gloves. <laughs> I'll bring you back in a bit. Dinner's cooking. <laughs> Dinner's cooking. <laughs> How many more stupid things can I come out with? Dinner's cooking. <laughs> it's not exactly an oven, is it? <laughs> well, that uh, heating pad was short lived, just stopped working. Didn't do nothing different, you could see it working on camera. Now, there's one or two options that I can do is I can have a little fire, but then that would mean is I'd have to use my cup. You know, to boil it in. I don't want to burn my cup, to be truthful with you. Or, I must have to eat it cold. I won't say it's really cold, but it is cold. It's got a little bit of heat to it, but. Yeah, well. What have you got to boil some in, Dan? Oh, I've got a pot of noodles, so I need to boil water. <laughs> oh, well, here goes. That eating pad didn't work brilliant. Reminds me of cat food, you know. 
but I much appreciated this one. <laughs> Yeah, that ain't, uh, that ain't got a plan, has it? I'm going to have to eat some of it. I'm just going to tell myself, it, it, it's got a, yeah, I don't know what it's got. But it clearly ain't worked. It's already cooked. That's just designed to reheat it. So it's not going to make me ill or out. I don't want to burn the bottom of my cup. And really, I don't want to be starting a fight to be truthful with you. I like there's some kids messing around. Right, people, after eating cat food, ugh, it was all right, and then, you know, as it get, kept going on. Ugh. <laughs> Not nice cold. I'm gonna have to get rid of that taste, and you're gonna laugh here. We're gonna have a jammy dodge yeah. <laughs> like I said, this uh, camp was just like a, a seriously last, you know, half an hour, 20 minutes thing. So it was like, grab a packet of jammy dodgers. I've even brought some uh, vegan popcorn. I was shopping today and I seen it, so I got done some. I thought I'd try some myself. And I thought, <laughs> you know, just get some jammy dodgers, something to snack on. <laughs> that is a lot better of a taste. If you're going to eat that, this chocolate here, it's not such a good idea before you go to bed because it's full of energy and everything. I'll probably be dancing in my bivy bag later if I eat that. So I can't go wrong with a packet of jammy dodgers. And Dan's even showing me, but these are actually vegan friendly. Didn't offer to share with me though, folks. You want one? <laughs> oh no, he says different. Share with it, do you want one? <laughs> I'm alright, thanks, I'll have one after my tea, though. If there's any left. If there's any left. No, I'm just sitting buddy dried, not dry, but cold pork, whatever, dog food or cat food. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it tastes like, but I could surely imagine. Yeah. Bet you guys are thinking, what the hell, Dan? Get your act together. I once got told by a fella, you'd over 40,000 subscribers and your videos are sh uh, rubbish. I've got over 40,000 subscribers for some reason, haven't I? Anyway, quick jump to his channel, blocked him, got rid of him. I didn't need any sarcastic comments. Why is a heart in the centre? Do you know? Is it because you, you love jammy dodges? Mm. Right. Must get some water bowled again. So you may have realised I didn't boil the water fully. When I did that last time, I ended up putting a little bit of cold water into it and leaving it to cool down. So I thought I'd just bring it to a slight boil and just better enjoy. It's still got some steam, it's still warm. It's still nice, actually hand warm. You know what I mean, Dan was just on about then. 
because we've been out, you know, so many weekends now. And we're on about, would you still camp as much as we do if we weren't recording it for YouTube and, you know, known as followers watching, people who aren't following the channel watches. And we just, do we just do it more because we want to grow his channel more? And to be fair, and I do agree, Dan, I think we do come out a lot more because we want to make the videos. Mm. I think it's because we, we're mindsetting weekend, let's camp, let's record, let's do all this stuff, in it. Yeah, absolutely. But Definitely. even when we're out doing this, you know, you guys see a clip from here, 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 here. You know, we make it look like it's all in one row and it ain't. There's a good 40 minutes gap, 20 minutes gap. And you've st even though we're recording, we've still got to leave a decent length of time in all this for us to enjoy us being outdoors. Because if you didn't enjoy being outdoors and you just did it for YouTube, well, I think people will soon get bored of coming out like this. You've got to enjoy being out. Like now, if I turn light out on this, it's pitch black. Now, if you're by yourself, that darkness could be a little bit terrifying. I'd be nervous. I'm not going to lie. You know, I'd want to be in my tent, bivy bag, hammock, and just lay there and keep me noise down a little bit. I don't know why. It's just something that happens. You can be nervous. And it's not a bad thing being nervous. It shows you're just human. But to what Dan was saying, yeah, I think if we weren't recording for YouTube, and we didn't enjoy reading, you know, the followers' comments. Like, you, if you've probably left a comment, I don't know. It's like you do enjoy seeing them and reading them and getting back round to replying to them. Yeah, I do believe we are out as much like this because we've got a following base and we like to keep the videos flowing. It's a weird thing to get into your mind, that. Crazy. YouTube is a wonderful place though. Thanks for watching people. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Right, so I'm gonna give this lantern a bit of a try. I'm not real too sure in uh, how quick we have to be in lighting it. Anyway, let's get it going a bit. I got a part of it, what did I do there? Just sat there looking at it. Now we've got to get this on quick. There we go, we'll get it, get it, get it, get it, there we go. Can't find the hole. There we go. Oh, it's a bit bright that isn't it? Sorry about that. There we go. Well, let's turn this light off up here. That's not too bad though, is it done? Quite nice though, isn't it? Nice and cold, is it? That is on full as well. It lights up everywhere perfect, that, doesn't it? And if I turn it right down. I'm not sure how far I turn it down for you, end up cutting it off. There we go, it dipped a bit then. Yeah. yeah, I think that's as a funny feeling. It don't want to turn itself off. <laughs> oh, wrong way. There we go. I'll turn it wrong way. So we can lower it really down like that.
There we go. That's quite nice, isn't it? Oh, what do you think about that? Eh? That's quite good. That I like that. Not bad for free. Really isn't. But if that stayed up in place, you could put it that way. Or that way. I don't think it makes any difference. Well, I'm just uh, climbing to my sleeping bag now, in my bivvy. You can see Dan behind me. He's tucking up into his as well. Quarter past 11, I think. Yeah, we were talks having a fire, but then we decided not to do. Just stood around. You know, if you could do this sort of thing, once you start talking about interesting topics, bloody hell, a big bang, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you start talking about interesting topics, time just flies. But for now, I want to get myself off to sleep. I'll see you guys in the morning. Thanks for watching. No, no. Well, good morning, people. 20 to 6 in the morning. It's nice and light. Dan's just slowly waking up. Slept all right. A bit of condensation in this bivvy. I think I talked about that yesterday. Even though I had a little vent open. Oh well, things happen, don't they? <sighs> I wake up a bit more and I'll bring you back. Uh, so Dan's got us uh, some water out boil with his stove. I thought I'd just put a few bits away. And I must have had more condensation than I thought last night. Because my sleeping bag, it, I'm not saying it's dripping wet. It's, it's wet to touch or damp to touch. Mildly moist. Mildly moist. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit more condensation than normal, let's say. So as normal, I'll have to get home, put this out on line. Mind you, it's synthetically so I can put it in dryer. Might be a little bit of a better idea. You can put your down ones in dryer as well on a really low heat. Extremely low heat. Mind you, don't listen to me on that one. Read what it says on your sleeping bag. Somewhere inside it, will tell you you can dry it once you've washed it. Don't you be sticking a 500 pound sleeping bag in drying and blaming me for ruining it. No doubt someone will say that water. Mm -hmm. You said I could dry this. It's my super rad sleeping bag. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all this sorted and I'm just going to turn the hoop bivvy down, turn it inside out and leave it over this wall for 10-20 minutes and let it dry out I think.
Now, I was just thinking to myself, I think this is where I want to end the video now. So if you've watched all the way, or you skipped through to this part, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. I know it's been a bit of a talky video. Like I said last night, it were a last 20, 30 minutes idea. Chuck some stuff in a bag and came out. I do appreciate it if you watched. Thank you very much. If you're not yet following, hit this here. You better follow my channel, subscribe basically. And I'll put some more videos up here for you to watch if you've not been on my channel before. And if you are a follower and you've stayed all the way to the end, thank you very much. I definitely do appreciate it. And I'll hopefully see you guys next time.